Yep. Hey, hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of YOMO, a year of magical learning. Today we're on uh, episode 61. And, uh, you know, I think this is uh, one of your area of expertise, right, Chris? Yeah, this is one of my, it's one of my personal, um, uh, well, all of this whole thing is personal, but this is, this is uh, um, like, this is something very, you can very, relate very, to yes. uh, more than, than yeah. me. Exactly. This is a, this is a very personal um, topic because this is my childhood hero. Uh, it's it's, a, it's um, Andre Agassi's autobiography. It's called Open, um, and um, uh, you know I highly recommend it. Actually, whether you're a tennis fan or not, like I mean this this book was I, I couldn't put it down. I honestly this is a pretty long book, um, and I think I did it in like like I want to say two days maybe or something. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't stop it. Like it was it was. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was just wrapped up in it. Like he, he lived a really unique life. Um, you know, from childhood, he was, uh, um, obviously I'm biased because like, I, you know, this is literally my childhood hero growing up. I mean, I like, I like idolized Andre Agassi. Well, I, was, I think, I think, you know, I think you know, the audience yeah. probably need to know a little bit background about yourself in terms yeah. of how, how competitive you are as a tennis player. I mean, you, you play tennis and you know, you're not, uh, some, uh, you know, amateur out there. Yeah, no, I mean, well, I'm, I'm certainly am an amateur, but uh, uh, certainly compare, I mean, on on yeah. an, on a uh, scale from you know whatever the whether tennis tennis uh, right. ranking was, you know, is he talking about from zero to six or something like that? It's it's uh yeah on a yes it goes the, the ranking system does go from zero to six, but the um but look lo, yes long story short I've been playing tennis my whole entire life it, it's been some it's been a lifelong passion of mine I started when I was like five years old and um you know i've been played through played through high school as you know well, that's a lot high that's and, a lot and i think and, that's yeah, that, that yeah. puts into perspective why this book it relates to you more than right. the most and, and not only that when i was a kid i used to play all summer long like you know well all year long really but but in the summer times it was you know five hours a day kind of thing out in the out in the hot summer sun and mm-hmm. and um uh you know my this was at the time of uh, i'm i'm of the age group when guys like Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi and, and, you know, Patrick Rafter and kind of people, I, I, I was, that was my generation of, of tennis players, like the, the McEnroe's and the Connors and the, you know, the Bjorn Borks and the people like that. That was, that was like my parents' generation. And mm-hmm, like my, mm-hmm. my generation of, of, of tennis players was, was Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras. I mean, that was, that was the pinnacle of tennis and that was the sport that I loved to play. And I, you know, I mean, and this guy, like you couldn't get two different people than, than Andre and Pete. Pete was like this, this um machine like he, he seemed like he was emotionless he seemed like he was just you know just just laser locked in at all times and and just he was just a, like put his hard hat on kind of thing and went to work and never showed any emotion and on the other side of the net you know he had andre who was uh you know the the rebel the wild child the uh, you know his long hair wearing wearing breaking all the rules and wearing all the bright colors and you know I, I don't know for some weird reason you know that that's way more my personality in general and I just naturally gravitated to, to Andre Agassi he didn't do the same thing that everybody else did he he didn't even play the same way that everybody else did he he was um he he, he had his own unique game and he uh yeah he yearns know, kind of, for freedom I mean in in, in yeah. my in my mind it's like you know this guy's is looking to be individualized versus uh conforming to an expectations of the masses yeah uh, exactly no that was well that was how, that was the impression i always got of him as well uh, you know growing up and and um you know even even he used to do those camera you know the rebel camera um uh photo shoots or whatever where he was like uh it was like be a rebel or whatever i mean it was uh-huh, it was uh-huh. it, right, right anyway yeah. uh so w- without a doubt like this is a personal book for myself and um and i couldn't wait to read this one, you know, on this journey. So, um, but what I actually learned was a ton about Andre that I had no idea about. And um, uh, I thought it was going to be this, you know, I, I thought it was going to be like, just one of those guys, like, um, like a Michael Jordan, like just maniacally focused, you know, like, this is, this is all like Kobe, like, this is all that I think about and competition, mm-hmm. competition, comp- like that wasn't Andre at all. He was actually, he's a really sensitive guy. He's mm-hmm. um, he, he, he wrote this book and I mean, he, he's a really solid writer as well. Um, but he, his story of his life was kind of remarkable because he, he actually, well, the, the, the reflection is, um, you know, the title is, is he who has a why can overcome any how. Um, and, uh, and, and I'll start it off with saying, like, the thing that, like, shocked me the most right out the gate, Andre, you know, told, me, told us all, like, he hates tennis. Like, I mean, he hates it. Like, I mean, he, like, literally, he spent his entire career um, and his entire life, uh, you know, he was forced to play. He was this prodigy growing up. Um, he, he was on, like, 
like Tiger Woods, like, you know, talk shows and stuff like that, where they were like, oh, check out this, like this five-year-old guy that's like doing all this crazy stuff. And he's like incredibly skilled. And, and it was because his dad, like literally built a tennis court in their backyard. They didn't really have a ton of money, but his dad was like obsessed with making him a pro tennis player and his, and his siblings. Uh, so he would drill them all day long. Um, this is what he did from like, you know, all day, every day, his entire life. Uh, out in the desert in, in Las Vegas in his backyard with his dad just you know hitting tennis balls at him this big machine that he had he like mm-hmm. just just he, I forget what he called it like the monster or something like that anyway it was like this this traumatizing machine that his dad would just <laughs> blast balls at him all day long with and, and make him you know hit and hit and hit and uh, you know of course you're going to get better as as you know you, you dedicate these things and his dad and this is really important to his dad. So he, you know, he, he thought it was really important to himself as well. So along the way though, he, um, uh, you know, he, he started growing, getting better. Um, but he, he grew to hate the game. Like he never, he never enjoyed it. Um, he, he hated everything about it. And he always just felt like, you know, I don't, I want, I want to do other things. I want to express myself, but I don't even know how to do that. And this is all that I know how to do from the mm-hmm. early on in his whole life. And he, he only, at a certain point in time, he just felt like he was trapped in it. You know, he was like, look, I don't, I don't want to do this. I hate it. But at the same right. time, like, I don't even know who I am or what's important to me or, or what I would do beyond mm-hmm. this. This is just a part of me. Right. So um, uh, you know, right out the gate, I mean, I was kind of blown away that this was this was the sentiment that he carried in his in his heart his whole entire life. Well, at a certain point in time, though, along his his journey, he, um, uh, he, he when he was like 22 or ish or like really in his early 20s, he, he finally broke through one of major. Um, I can't remember which one it was. Maybe it was Wimbledon or something like that. I, 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 don't, I don't remember exactly which major he won first, but uh, he broke through, he won a major. He had been second a few times, you know, already. Uh, he was certainly one of those like next prodigy guys. Everybody knew he was going to be great. And when he, and when he won, he made number one of the world. And he was like, I, he felt more unfulfilled than ever. You know, he was like, I don't I, like the, none of this feels good. You know, he was like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, but he kept, kept pushing through kept grinding mm-hmm. away this is all i knew how to do and he kept he kept winning he won a few more majors um uh and it's like mid to to uh, starting to get into his later 20s and um uh and then all of a sudden like the whole world collapsed he he you know he found himself just incredibly miserable unhappy he was married to brooke shields at the time and he was unhappy in his marriage um you know he felt like you know he he didn't know you know who he was or what he wanted to do with his life he felt like you know he felt like he just didn't have a choice of a lot of stuff and he ended up actually doing drugs and stuff and crystal meth and his, and, uh, um, he got caught by the, the, the ATP tour, you know, and, and with the failed drug test for crystal meth. And, uh, mm-hmm. he, um, he then uh, also got divorced and then his ranking plummeted. He was down in like the two hundreds. He was out of shape. He got injured. Like he was just, he was just miserable. He was at home doing bad stuff and like, you know, lost and, and didn't know what to do. Uh, so it was in this time of his life when he, um, really kind of just said, I, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on what I care about. And, and one of the things that he always wanted in his life, but he never really did. He dropped out of high school because he was playing tennis and he went and, you know, he was like, this is what I do. I'm going to go pro. This is, this is what I've been groomed to do. So, but he always really valued education, but he never really had a chance to ever go explore that himself. He's a, he seemed like a very introspective guy. I like to learn a lot, but for whatever reason, like he could never fill that value, I guess it seemed like. So he um, started to turn his attention and his platform toward um, building a, a school for underage uh, underprivileged kids in his hometown of Las Vegas. So he started the, I think it's called the, the Andre Agassi Preparatory Life Academy or something like that. It's called the Andre, Andre, Andre Agassi Preparatory Academy. Mm-hmm. And this, this uh, uh, school became like everything for him. Like he, he, he felt fulfilled. He felt mm-hmm. like he, he had a why. He watched these kids growing up and he was like, I, I saw, I, I'm assuming he saw himself in them. And he, right. and he, you know, he felt like he was doing something you know, good, good with his life. And this is all, you know, when he was at the lowest point of his career and he was, you know, lost himself and he went through his own, through that, like going through that rubble of his own life, he discovered, you know, what was really important to him, things that he really valued about things that he really cared about. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and slowly but surely he decided, you know what, like, this is what I really care about. And, and I know I can help them even more if I go do what I know how I can do, uh, which is go be the best tennis player that I can be and use that platform and use, use that, um, uh, uh, you know, that exposure to, to grow the mission of, of the school and things that, you know, he really found uh, a lot of purpose and value in. And, and that's what he did. He had this huge career resurgence that you never see. Like when, when tennis players like fall off the map, like it, like they fall off the map, it's, it's, it's hard to get back. Right. Andre was 
down and out. Everybody thought his career was over. All of a sudden he had this rebirth in his career in his late twenties, all the way through like his mid thirties, where he was still playing, winning majors. I think he ended up winning more majors in the back half of his career than he did in the front half of his career. Mm -hmm. He ended up going on to, to, to fulfill, fulfill all the, the, the high standards and expectations that people had of him, you know, his whole entire life. But the, but the key change was always, he, he now was doing it for something. He had, he had a why now to go do right. these things. Right. And he had a, and he had a purpose that, you know, that drove him and it changed his whole life. Like he then found his wife, you know, it's like the compound effect in the other direction, right? He started, mm -hmm. he, he went, once he, once he found something that he really cared about that he could apply himself toward and, and meaningful work, he then, you know, went and used that same kind of, you know, purpose and, 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 uh, whatever you get that feeling inside of you, you're like, I'm on a mission, you know? Um, th that compound effect, you know, started to, to radically change his whole entire life. And, mm -hmm. you know, he met Steffi Graf. He ended up getting married to her. They had, you know, multiple children. He had a resurgent career and now he's doing all the great stuff that he's doing with his life now. So um, I felt as I was listening to the story, a lot of kinship with, with Andre's story, because it, it reminded me of my own life mm -hmm. a lot, you know, of right. like, you know, I mean, to be fair, like I don't love sales, you know, it's not like I, it's not like I wake up and eat, sleep and breathe sales. I, I've done it because this is what I've always done and, and I'm good at it. And, um, you know, and I can make a living for my family, but I've never like found that passion and, and that, that purpose and that mission in my life. And, you know, Amelia woke me up, um, uh, you know, through the, through, and not, through the rubble of my own life after that, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, discovered what is really important. And, um, and, you know, I feel like, I feel like we're on a runaway train at this point in time. And, you know, the, this, I know exactly what I want to do. I don't know. I don't, I'll say it again. I don't know where I'm going, but I know where I'm, and I know how I'm going to get there, you know? So, right. um, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the story of Andre Agassi and how I feel like I related to it in my own life. I know, I know that was pretty long winded, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the, the question is, is what's your, why, you know, what's that, what's that thing that you've discovered that you just, you know, think about all day long and, and, and it drives you forward and, and what you want to, you know, your meaningful work, you know, what, what's your, mm -hmm. what's your, what's your, what's your purpose, you know? Um, so right. yeah, love to get your thoughts. So for me, I think going through these, um, it reminds me of a, a thought, you know, you know how um, there's a lot of uh, people who teach you how to sell something. They say, Hey, you know, uh, why would I, why would a person buy a drill? I mean, because they need to drill something. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. They need they need a they hole. Make something. Right? Yeah. But that's not why they that's not why they 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 buy it. That's not why the value of if you sell a, a drill for like forty bucks, right? Why are they spending forty bucks to buy a drill? Is it because they want a hole? No, it's because they want to see the pictures on the wall, the pictures yeah. of their kids on the wall. That's their why. Yeah. And so I think it relates to. If you have a, a why, that means that anything you need to do to get the why, you would do it and it's worth it's worth the effort. Whether you need to buy a drill for 40 bucks and make a hole. But on, not only that you're making a hole, you're making a perfect hole right. in alignment in in on on uh, on a um you know, you, you want to make it like really, really straight and you want to make it like really, really neat, right? You want to make it perfect. The thing you right. do is that important. It's not important what the, what the hole is, but because the why is what you want it, therefore you're going to put a, a lot more effort into drilling that hole to the point where it is in the right place, at the right size, at the right level, right? right. Because if, if you want a hole, just just randomly punch a hole in, in, into a wall with some kind of drill with half half baked effort, right? But hundred percent. If you're asking for a hole for somebody to do something without a why, that's what you get. Yeah, you can get but a half ass effort. If they yeah. have a why, I want to see my picture of my kids, my family. Then the the, the thing that you you're asking them to do is gonna be superb. So, I couldn't, so the, couldn't agree the, more. Yeah. So the story reminds me of, of that thought. And I don't know if you, you think that's uh, appropriate because, you know, that's how, I, that's how I'm, I'm, I'm understanding this, this, you know, if you, uh, the, the why some people do something. If you have the why, then, he, then you can overcome any how. And, you know, whatever the how is, I need to get from here to there, regardless of how it is, how dangerous, how risky it is, how much effort it is. If there is a why, then that's going to be worth the effort. Yeah. I mean, that's, ex that's exactly what I was 
what I was thinking as I read through Andre's story. And that's exactly what I'm thinking when I think of my own life, you know, um, mm-hmm. the, I, I think if I flipped it around and was like, if I was starting from scratch and I was, and I was building a, you know, I was a, I was an infant again and I was rebuilding my entire life. I would, I would want to start with the why first and then, yes, and then yes. figure out start with you know, why. The, right. It reminds it, it, me of uh, yeah. Simon Sinek's uh, yeah. book. <laughs> exactly. That, well, start that's with why. That, that's like starting a business though. But if you're starting your life, you know, if you start with why and you start, but with I think, I think about, it you know, all boils down the same to, yeah. to, um, humanity in, in, in at the core level, right? Right. Whether you're doing a business or whatever, you have to have a why, whatever Absolutely. you do have to have a why, why are you doing something? Right. I, true. I, I was, I was adding this up the other day and like, I kind of was even blown away by this myself. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I, I just finished my 176th, um, reflection this morning, mm-hmm. which obviously is 176 books. Plus, you know, I still have like, I don't know, 20, it'll be like around 200 ish before I catch back up to where I started off. Anyway, mm-hmm. we don't need to go through the math, but the, the point of the matter is what I was getting at is like over the past two years, I spent roughly three hours plus a day, you know, uh, at least uh, when you, when you look at how much I read, it's, it's at least two hours a day on average, you know, maybe not every day like that, but like on average, when you average it all out, it's about two hours a day. Um, mm-hmm. It takes me about an hour to write these reflections every single morning. You and I talk about these things for at least 30 minutes every single night. Plus right. we have extra time that we do other stuff, you know, that, that has to do with the club and emission and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so like add it all up, that's like somewhere between like three to three and a half hours a day of, of really hard work. I mean, this is not like, it's like easy stuff, right. You know, right, but like, right. I don't even, I don't even think about it. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's effortless. I, I mean, and I try to do the absolute best that I can for my purpose and my why, right. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that has, that has nothing to do with, with what I do every single day. And now I can translate that though, through this, through this whole process, I can translate that into an area that I previously didn't have a why. And I can, I can go overcome that now, mm-hmm. but, but ideally I'd like to go find something that aligns with all this stuff, like, like the year magical learning project where, you know, you look back and all of a sudden the, it's effortless to, to, to put in really hard effort into something, you know? Um, right. Right. That's the ideal world, right? That's meaningful work, right? You know, but right. like so it Andres, makes it a yeah. lot easier to right. do this, this, you know, Herculean tasks when right. you have a reason to do so. And I think that's, I mean, the thing is that he, uh, Andre Agassi, he's played tennis and he obviously plays well, but every time he practices, every time he play, he doesn't enjoy it at all. He hates it. He hated it. Like, I mean, I, I, like every, he, th- th- this was said like 30 times in the book where he would, he would go to dinner with somebody and they're like, they're like asking him about tennis. And he's like, I hate tennis. And they're like, well, you don't really hate tennis, do you? And he was like, no, no, no. No, I, I really hate tennis. Like I hate everything about it. And they're like, well, that can't possibly, how could you possibly be Andre Agassi, number one ranked tennis player in the world, world grand slam champion, you know, like, and, and, and you hate it. Like what, what, like, you know, but like, I think I hear that. And I, and I, and I think back to my own life where I can't tell you how many times I've said to people, like, you don't want to like when they're like, oh man, you work at a great company. You, you, you know, I, I'd love to do what you do. And I'm like, no, you don't want to do what I do. It, it sucks. Like, you know, you know, like, I hate it. like, you know, and they're like, well, you can't like hate it. I'm like, yeah, no, no I, I hate it. Like, you know, um, uh, 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 but you know, that was before obviously, you know, all this other stuff. Right. And, right. And, and that was my motto though. That was my, and we talked about this. It was embrace the suck. It was do the things you hate the most first. It was, mm-hmm. it, it was, it was every, it was grit and grind and, you know, whatever, whatever this other shit that, you know, we tell ourselves like, and, and it was not me. Like, I mean, I, I didn't, I, that was what I, that was what I thought I had to do in order to, mm-hmm. like, to just grit through it. Right. And it brings in the, the, the more that you do that, the more off balance you get. And the more off balance you get, the closer you get to depression and, 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 and that, and that, and that unfulfillment, you know, you know, yeah. stage when, and when Andre found himself in his late twenties, you know, and, and like, it happens to everyone. Like if, if you don't know what you're doing something for or why you're doing something for, like, it's going to happen to you eventually. Like, you, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're not, you're not going to survive that because I, I've seen a lot of, a lot of people like, for example, somebody who is a single, right. And he works for a company they don't like. They don't last more for more than two, three years, but yeah. a person worked for 20, 40, 50 years and hated their job and is miserable because they have some kids at home. They have to support. You're right. Right. Because imagine a single person say, you know, I don't need this. Right. They're not going to be able to survive. They will not survive. They will have a, a meltdown. Yep. But a, a father with 
a, uh, a family to feed, they can take any kind of abuse. And it's unfortunate, but that's it what is. I've seen in corporate America and in, in other countries as well, in, especially in, in Asia. I mean, people hate their job, but they, you know, they just suck it up and take it. You're, 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 you're dead on, right? And, you know, the sad part about it is, and what we're trying to fix is to take those people that do have a why and a purpose and mm -hmm. align and align what they do to those values and to that why and to that purpose, right? And then it, then it becomes a harmonious state versus this. Yeah, but you also get you also get the better version. So you right. you look at Andre Agassi, right? You say that he probably win more of the tournaments in his latter half after he found the why than his first half. It right. means that, like I was saying before, if you have the why, the how. It's gonna be improved as well because you want because the how like drilling that hole you want to make sure it's it's perfect perfectly level you want it in the place in the center of a wall or wherever it is to make the Y look the best it could be, and so the work that you put in is gonna be even better, right? Because Agreed. these guys hate their jobs but they had to do for the Y so the jobs are probably you know kind of average at best. But if you give them a why, the job they do is going to be, I would say, more, more, than, more than, than they would do even they, with the eyes closed. A hundred percent. It's just yes. because the why just carries such, you know, super strength for them. It gives them strength to do more. So Andre does the same thing that he hates, right? But now he has a why. He don't mind it anymore. And he does it better. Yeah. And so it's all it's all looking up from 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 that point on. It, and the compound effect takes over after that, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. And then uh, you know, well, actually the compound effect was in effect in both ways. It was, it was, it was compound effect going the negative direction in the yes. front half of that. Yes. And then it's the compound it's, it's effect. It's either gonna spiral know, down, right. spiral down or it's gonna spiral up. Right, exactly. Right. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting to look at it. I mean, from that it, it also, also boils down to the the concept of when you want something and you know you know the why, the universe can spy to, to to help you do it. True, <laughs> you're you're right. Like I mean, I I can't I cannot tell you like, I, I mean I I feel like I'm a hard worker. Like I've always worked hard my whole life. Um, you know whatever that means, worked hard, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the past two years since since Amelia has passed away. Like I've never worked harder on, on a project than I worked on her book and the audio book. And then, and then this, like, you know, and then what you and I have done, like, I've never worked harder in my life than to do these things. And I don't even, and I, and I don't, I don't even bat an eye at it. And it, like, I never, it never once felt like work ever, you know, it never once right. felt like right. it was, it was hard. I mean, I, when I look back on it, I'm like, damn, that was a lot. Like, I mean, hell, we're, we're 61 into these things. I'm a 175. And we were talking about this the other day, you know, where mm -hmm. it's like, you look down the mountaintop and you're like, shit, we've come a long way, you know, like, right. and, and you're like, I didn't, it's been nine months since I haven't woken up and written one of yeah, these reflections. And we every barely break morning, a you know? like, sweat, right? Right. right. And, and that's, that's the beauty of it. Once you have a why, you can do so, like I said, you know, it's monumental task. And we barely say, well, well, it didn't, I didn't strain at all. I didn't strain any, any muscle. I didn't strain any mental fatigue. It was, right? har it was harmonious. It was natural. It was, it was, it was going it was with such a breeze. Yeah. Right. 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 It, it's, it's so, it's so aligned that you don't feel any pressure, any resistance. Right. And like, and it like feels you say, good. when you have that ability, right. How, how much longer can you go? You, you can, can go, go forever. forever. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the tortoise <laughs> and the hare, right? You know, it's yeah. like it's the you know. Yeah, I mean, if only that it, the the tortoise probably is the hare. It was just the hare with a Y, you know. Um, <laughs> like it can just keep going, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, so anyway, it's it's an it's an interesting you know book. I would I would highly recommend reading it if you um, if you are into it and want to check it out. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not just saying this because I'm like a big Andre Agassi fan. It was, but I it think was, it, it, it gives really us a, a very uh, important lesson in life because I think that's your focal point. If you need to find the why to have a more enjoyable life because the things that you do, you're going you're gonna to do anyway. Right. But if you find your why, you're going to find joy in it, in the things that you do. So why, why, why not do that? 
Agreed. Well, that's a topic for a different day in terms of how do you find a why and, and you know, like, uh, cause I don't, I don't, I, I'm under the impression and I, like, I don't want to get too deep into this, but I'm under the impression that a why doesn't find you or that you don't find a why that a why finds you. That That's kind of my general rule of thumb. You do a bunch of activities until you find your why. I don't Well, I, I, so, so I, I, I need to clarify that. I agree with you in one point, but at the same time, you have to recognize the why because it will come to you and yes. you can reject it. That's true. Yeah. Right. And so you need to know what this, I'm this person. Right. So when it comes, the opportunity comes to me, the why comes to me, I need to embrace it. Say, okay, this is, this makes sense. I could do this versus when it comes to you. No, no, I was taught to do this. I don't, I don't want things to change. Then you're not going, you're not going to get your why. Right. It's about that connection. You have yeah. to connect with your why. I, I agree. It's like your spirit animal, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I'm with you. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll save this topic for another day. Cause it's a good one and we can, you know, keep, I'm sure there'll be plenty more of these to talk about in the future. Right. Some topic. So, uh, but uh, thanks for joining us for the day. And the question we can leave y'all with is, is what's your why, um, you know, comment and uh, uh, leave, leave, uh, leave your comments in the, in the chat and I'd uh, love to hear about it. Yeah. And that's it for our show. And we'll see you next time.